Hey, what's up you guys? Jonathan Old Running Farm here. Thanks for joining us. You know, we hatch an awful lot of eggs. Um, and we've probably incubated and hatched, what do you think, over a thousand eggs? Probably. We have hatched an awful lot of eggs here on our farm. And we have used a lot of different incubators. We currently have three. So in today's video, we've heard a lot of questions from people. We've seen it on a lot of Facebook groups about what type of incubator they should use, why. So today we're gonna talk about our three different incubators and why they might be right for you and why they might not be right for you. Let's get into it. All right, so the first one we're gonna talk about is the Brinzia, the Brinzia Maxi 2 Echo. So this is our first incubator. This is the most inexpensive. It comes in at around $180. This holds 28 or so chicken eggs, according to the manufacturer. And this is sort of the perfect incubator for the, the person who wants to get started incubating hatching eggs. Like if you have you know, 12 chickens in your backyard and you wanna have some baby chicks around, this would be a great first step. So the pros for this model are, so the startup cost is very small. So like I said, it's around $180 to purchase. So you're not breaking the bank totally. You know, there's a lot of incubators in this sort of price range, so this is good. It's nice and compact. So when you're not incubating hatching eggs, you can store it pretty easily. So in addition to it being small, it also holds the temperature pretty well, as long as you're not in like a crazy, you know, cold room. As long as you're a normal human being with normal household temperatures, this should do just fine. So the cons for this model are, uh, number one, it's a manual egg turner. So that means that you have to, every time you're gonna turn the eggs, you open this up, you turn them by hand, and you put this back on. Uh, so that can be a little bit difficult to remember to do, you know, depending on uh, how many or what type of eggs you have in there and rate at which you need to turn them. It could be every couple of hours. Uh, we usually did every, you know, a couple times a day, and that usually worked pretty well for us. So the next con about this is that it's got a analog temperature sensor, which is literally just a thermometer that's stuck in there. So who knows how accurate it actually is. Regardless of that, we have had good success with this, so I wouldn't let that, you know, turn you down from it. It does an okay job. It's just a little bit hard to see sometimes. And also, it's got a, a difficult means of adjusting the temperature. There's a little screw that's right in here that and this thing comes with a little plastic tiny little screwdriver that you use and basically you turn it right and that makes it hotter you turn it left it makes it cooler so it's really not a great way of adjusting the temperature so if we have a lot of you know hot and cold fluctuations this it, it's a little tough to get this dialed in uh, we also lost that little plastic piece so if we want to adjust the temperature we have to go and get like our tiniest little flathead screwdriver to adjust it so that would be the thing the other thing about this is to control the humidity, you pour water into this slot right here, and that feeds the little water trough that's right in here. But there's no humidity sensor, so you never really know exactly what the humidity is. You know, you can sort of assume that when you have half of it full, it's 50% humidity, but uh, there's no monitor in here, so if you wanted to get really exact with it, you need to get hygrometer, I believe they're called, which measures the humidity. But, so the other thing about this one is you have to be careful when you pull this off. We used to set this down on top of this, and then I guess something inside the little fan broke, because what happens is these little strands here that's actually the, the heat. So those things heat up and then there's a little like computer fan in here that blows, that circulates the, the warm air. And one of the times when we set it down like this, the fan started making a different noise and then it stopped working altogether. I think that was actually the first time yeah. we hatched eggs with this. And so the fan stopped working. You know, luckily these, you can sign up for like the, the warranty with this one. And so they sent us another fan, but like, you know, to have the fan break on the first time, that was pretty upsetting. Aside from those things, this has been a great little incubator. I think this one, besides the the super duper one we have, I think this is Catherine's second favorite. We've had great success with this thing. You know, there's just a couple little things about it, but if you are a beginner incubator or if you've never incubated any eggs before, would definitely recommend getting this one. So the next one we're gonna talk about is our, our step up from the uh, Maxi 2 Echo to this, which is, this is the Brinzia Ovation EX56. So this is the, uh, basically twice the capacity. Uh, this is the much more advanced model. Uh, so the pros for this one are, it has these nifty little 
um, automatic egg turners. So you can see they, uh, mm. so that's nice. So you don't have to worry about, um, you know, going in and manually turning your own eggs. And you can set different intervals for them uh, to go. Uh, this has a really nice digital interface, really nice. I mean, it's a little, like a one inch square box. Um, but you can set the temperature with it, the digital display. You can even set the humidity and it's got this little uh, tube and a little motor in here that you put this in water and it pulls the water up. So that's really nice. So this one has a much bigger capacity. It holds 56 total eggs as opposed to 28 with the Maxi 2 Echo. With all these advanced features, this one is a little bit more expensive. This one comes in at $450, so it's a lot more expensive, but you do get a lot of bells and whistles for that. Now for this one, there are some cons to it. This little water pulley thing is a little bit iffy. Sometimes it slipped off the little pulley and, and the last time we used it, it seemed to not really be working. So we also had the egg turner motor go out on us twice. So we had to uh, send it back twice. And in one of those times, we found that uh, the screw, one of the screws that holds the inner plastic cover to the outer plastic cover was stripped. So we were unable to take it off. So we ended up having to send this whole top shell back to the manufacturer. It was a little bit of a pain in the neck. And you know, they, in the end, it all worked out. They sent us new motors, they, they fixed the strip screw, but it was a really big hassle. And we did sort of have to push them on it to get it to go. Um, and speaking of the inner cover, with both of these Brinzia incubators, they are a little bit difficult to clean because you need to take off this plastic inner cover in order to clean the top. So, and like, you know, little dust and little chick feathers gets all up in here. So you need to take it all the way off. And then it's, it's just, it's a little bit of a pain in the neck to clean. All right, so last up is our super duper incubator that we bought last year uh, to hatch out some emu eggs. So this is the GQF 1502 Digital Sportsman. And this is like the Cadillac of incubators. So this one holds up to 270 chicken eggs. Wow, that's a lot. God forbid we ever put that many eggs in here. And this one also, like all the bells and whistles, but this one is the most expensive. Currently it's on their website at $837, which is an awful lot. But this incubator is awesome. It holds temperature supremely well. It's really well insulated. Um, it's got the automatic egg turners. It's got, you know, the interface is really easy to use. You can again set the temperature. So we've used this one six or seven times, something like that. You know, we had it running for you know over two straight months when we were hatching out emus, because from day one, yeah, so it was it was at least two months straight. Um, and then we hatched out several eggs. We hatched out a bunch of chickens for our egg layer flock and several other ones after that and never had anything break on this. It's always worked every time we've used it. Very reliable, sturdy, strong. So it's got a digital temperature control and the user interface is really easy to use. You can also control the turning intervals and overall it's very easy to use. So even though this is my favorite incubator, there are some cons to it. Uh, it is really big, takes up a lot of floor space, uh, and will be a little bit difficult to store. Uh, you need to buy the egg holders separate. It just comes with the uh, metal, actually, egg turners themselves. Uh, it also, as I said before, is really expensive. Uh, so this is not like recommended for the beginner. And it has a small humidity reservoir. You can get like a bucket that has a little drip system that goes in there, which if you're gonna go this route, I would probably recommend, because this one you just had to refill it basically every day. So this one doesn't have a digital humidity control. It just has these little plugs on the side that allows for more airflow. So basically if you want less humidity in there, you take out the plugs. If you want more humidity, put in the plugs to keep all the humidity inside the incubator. All right guys, so that's gonna do it for uh, this video. Again, so we would definitely recommend the Maxi 2 Echo for the beginner. 
you can get this uh, Ovation 56 EX. Both of these are from Brinzia for the more advanced user. And then if you're like a super duper crazy chicken person, definitely check out the GQF 1502 Digital Sportsman. If you're gonna go big, go really big. Um, if you guys have any questions, leave them down in the comments below. Please give this video a like. Leave us a comment, let us know what you think either way. And uh, as always, please subscribe. We put out new videos on Mondays and Fridays and we go live every Wednesday at 7 p.m. Eastern time. So make sure you stop by and say hello next time. Thanks for watching.